Hello, I'm Praxla Tarna, and today we're going to be doing a small largest item. In this case, we'll be doing uh, a little bitty mouse who absolutely, under no circumstances, is a plague carrier. Uh, <laughs> I've used these before as site tokens. They make wonderful things like pin cushions, you can put a little catnip in them and make them cat toys, you can put a whole bunch of them together and launch them on a trebuchet, uh, you can do about anything with them. Um, I was looking at an article the other day uh, where they had found a leather mouse from the Roman period in Vinlandia that was thought to be just sort of a joke, uh, something funny and fun, and so that's what these are. These are for child's toy, cat toy, pin cushion, whatever you want to make it. Um, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to start with a few items. Um, you need a piece of fabric, preferably one that is not going to ravel. This is a piece of wool, this is just a wool scrap. Felt works wonderfully. You could do it out of leather, you could do it out of about anything you want to. Um, we'll be using I've got um, just some pearl cotton. You could also use embroidery floss. You could use regular thread if you want. The stitches won't be as evident if you're using regular thread. Um, in this case, you will need one little bead, one little seed bead, although if you would prefer, you can choose not to use that at all and just tie a big knot. So pretty much you are looking at fabric, thread. Um, so I chose to do this, this particular project because you don't need a pattern. You'll be making your pattern as you go. The pieces you will eventually end up with are, this is the mouse body. Let's put the little mouse back in, in frame so you can see him. This is the mouse body. It's a half circle. Uh, this is the bottom piece, which holds the stuffing in, makes his little, his little base. Um, we'll be cutting that once we have assembled the body piece. Two little ears. These are cut from scraps. They're basically just the shape of your fingerprint. Um, you could cut them in a different shape if you wanted to, but you'll end up with these four pieces. So let's make the first piece. The first piece is just a circle. Um, you could do this with a top of a mug, top of you know a, a lid from some kind of container, whatever, whatever size you want, whatever shape, whatever, well, the shape is circular. Um, whatever size you want. In this case, I've just gone with this particular size because it makes a, a cute, a cute little mouse. So go ahead, trace your round. Um, I'm not recommending you use a Sharpie. I'm using it on camera just because it's easier to see. Then you're going to cut your round, cut your circle. Go ahead and keep your scrap pieces. Okay, so now you have a circle. I'm going to fold that in half. And we're going to cut the circle in half. And you now have your first pattern piece. Okay. So, next thing we're going to do is take our pattern piece, our circle, fold it in half. Um, I happen to be using uh, a piece of wool from a jacket that I cut apart, so it still has the interfacing. That's the white you're seeing but I left it on so you can see front and back sides. So um, you have several choices. You can either do a blanket stitch, which is my, my preference, so that I end up with a, a visible little stitch. Um, you could do a running stitch if you wanted. If you wanted to use a regular piece of fabric that's non-raveling, you could put your right sides together and just stitch it on the machine or stitch it inside and, and turn it out, but since I'm doing it this way, I'm going to do a basic blanket stitch. Um, so I just start my, my thread, go 
out, make sure that I have my thread under my needle, pull tight, my next blanket stitch, again, coming up into that loop. And I'm going to blanket stitch all the way up to the top. So once I've blanket stitched up to the top, I end up with a little cone. Um, at the top of this cone, you have a choice. You can either do what I've done, where I have put my bead on my thread, and I'm just going to take a couple of stitches and stitch the bead in place. If you don't want to use a bead, you can do a couple of, you can do a, a large knot there to give yourself a nose, or you can choose not to have a nose. Um, this little one that I'm using right here doesn't really have a nose much, and that's fine. But I think they look cuter with noses. Just like you could use three beads and you could have a nose and two eyes later on if you choose. But go ahead and put your, stitch your bead on top. and then put your, your thread back in. Now, you have a choice here. You can either come back out for your ear, or you can finish it off, tie a knot, tie another knot and come back out for your ear. You have a choice. Um, I tend to just come back out where I want my ear to be. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to cut our ears. So here's a piece of our scrap. Um, like I said, they're, they're about fingerprint. So you're just going to cut a little. And you can play with them, um, make them bigger, make them smaller. You can see like, uh, for instance, this one has very small ears, where this one has rather big ears. Um, doesn't really much matter. But you're just going to cut cut two ears from your scrap. And they're, they're basically elongated, roundish things. Like I said, they look pretty much, pretty much like your, like your fingertip. Okay, so I have now cut my ears. Next thing I'm going to do is stitch those ears on. So what I want to do is I want to take my ear piece and I'm going to cut a little slit there. And the reason for that, you don't absolutely need to, but I like it because then I can overlap the two pieces and I get a cupped ear, which I think is cuter. Um, so got your your ear come out from the inside come through the two pieces of your ear now that you've snitched, snipped it in half um, go back over back down in Don't catch the nose. All right, and we pulled that tight and we've got the little cupping thing going. Um, and then just notch your ear off. Kind of tweak the position of your ears. And now you have your, your little Triangle mousy. If you want to at this point, you could put uh, either French knots or um, a bead for eyes. Um, I don't put eyes on mine um, in part because if I give them to cats or children, the, the more things I have for them to pull off, the more chance they have of pulling them off and, and choking. So if you're going to do these for, for very small under three children, don't put the, don't put the uh, bead on the nose. Go ahead and do a, a knot there. All right. So, next step. For my next step, I'm going to take um, another piece of my scrap. In this case, 
for instance, if you had if you had cut your your round, you, you have a second piece of that round. Um, if you want to, you can make a second mouse with it. If you're just going to make one mouse, you can also use it to make your bottom. So I'm going to put my little my little mousey down on top of that piece, and I'm going to trace around it. Um, the piece I'm going to get is going to kind of be like a, a teardrop shape. So keep them in place. This is easier to do when I'm not doing it on camera. All right. So then there's my piece. And you can see that it's sort of a teardrop shape. And I will cut that piece out. So now we have made all four of our pieces. Because we've made our half circle, our two fingertip ears, and our teardrop bottom. Okay, so then we will put it, put him on top of that and we will stitch, stitch the bottom to the top bit. Um, I like to use some sort of, um, I use quilting clips, but you could use a, a pin right there just to hold it in place and just blanket stitch, blanket stitch around. Um, I, here's why. I like to start at the, at the center of the back. The reason for that is then my extra, extra thread can become the mousey's tail, but you can start at the front if you would rather. You can start wherever you would like. Um, I'm starting here because again, I'm going to stitch around back to the back, tie a knot there, and let the bottom come out, and it'll be a tail. So, so after we have stitched all the way around. You're going to leave a little bit of a hole undone. Keep your, keep your thread still attached. Don't knot it off yet. And then you're going to open that up and you're going to stuff. Um, and you could use fiber fill. You could use a couple of cotton balls. If you're going to give it to your, your kitty cat, you could use catnip. You could use, um, I'm using um, some wool because that's what I've got. And since, I'm, since I've got a uh, wool for my little mousy, the whole thing is going to be wool. Um, if you are giving this for largesse, some people have wool allergies, so you want to make sure that you label that. But I like wool, so that's what I'm using. And just stuff it in there. You don't need a ton. Um, if you're an embroiderer, you could use orts. You could use you know, whatever you've got as stuffing. Then what we will do is after we have stuffed our little friend here, we are going to go ahead and close that. Ah, yeah. So my, he's all stuffed. I've gone all the way around. I have this little stuff left here. And so I will pull my needle back out, do the last several stitches. Knot it off. Leave my tail, cut it to length. Um, if you wanted to, you could use a larger piece of yarn and make a longer tail. You could also, like I said, we used these as sight tokens one time. And what we did was we did an, a loop of yarn and just uh, as we were stuffing, stuffed the little knot in there, closed it around that, and so we had a, a little necklace to wear the sight token. But you can leave it that way, and he's, our, your little mousy has, has a tail. And there you go. You now have a very simple little mouse for use as a child's toy, a cat's toy, a pin cushion, um, you could, when you stuff it, you could perfume it and and have a little sachet, any number of things with your with your easy little mousy. All right, um, 
So this is day one of Largesse August. I hope you enjoy it. Tomorrow we are going to be doing a very, very simple um, money purse made out of a scrap of leather, um, a scrap of suede. Uh, you can cut it from, uh, in my case, I have, I have like um, old parts of a couch. Well, they're new parts of a couch, but couch cover, very thin um, parts. You know, you could, you could uh, take a jacket and do that. But anyway, you'll need enough, enough of uh, that material, or you could use some, you could use felt. You'll need enough of that to make a circle, whatever size you'd like. Um, dinner plate size is pretty good. Um, we'll be using some ribbon and a large bead, and I will post those parts in tomorrow's video. So thanks for coming to Largesse August. Thanks for participating. Hope to see some Largesse made.